Well, here's my prototype of my wood stove controller. This here is the remote, and this is the actual controller. You can see by the XB that they talk wirelessly to each other. There's this one over here. Now the stove controller has a thermocouple amplifier, has a digital temperature sensor, okay, it also has a servo motor for the stack, this controls the damper angle through a little chain drive and <clears throat> the linear servo for the uh, for the draft control isn't here yet so it does run off a of PWM um, it's a for jelly 50 millimeter linear actuator and um, I could have run it in servo mode like this one uh, what the heck, I figured I'd run it with PWM. If, if I got problems with it, I'll change it. So anyway, what this does is uh, the remote controller um, basically sends a command and a status request out to the uh, stove controller. I think it's once every half a second. I have to look in the code up there. Um, it has, let me see, on the on the controller part of it, it has, um, where is that thing? One of these temperature and humidity sensors on it. So it knows the ambient temperature. Not that it really matters for this application, but it knows the dew point. And it know, or it knows the relative humidity and it knows the dew point. This right here is my thermostatic set point for the um, for the whole you know controller. It basically says this is what I want this sensor to read. So when this number is bigger than that number, the stove cranks up. When this number is smaller than this number, the stove cranks down. And this is portable. It runs off a of battery. Right now it's running off the USB power supply, but it will run off a lithium polymer battery. It's got a touch screen. So like if I want to change the room temperature set point, I can just jack up the the number to 74 or whatever. You know, jack it back down 72. So it's sending that wirelessly. <clears throat> it sends the the room temperature and it sends the, sends the set point and it sends a command byte which basically you know allows me to manually control the stove. I haven't written that part of the software yet. Um, this position, this one right here is the stack temperature which is the thermocouple amplifier and this is the damper position and the draft position which is currently going a little crazy at the present time it'll work on that but anyways um, so these are all getting updated at like you know once a second or something like that and um, right now um, you can see that the uh, the room temperature is below the uh, or the room temperature is above the set point so this thing is automatically throttle the damper I mean the draft control to 100% shut and it's got the damper open so it's trying to cool the stove off okay so let me heat up the solder and iron to simulate my stack temperature and I'll show you a little bit more about how this works stand by all right we get the weller heating up and uh let me see here here's the end of the thermocouple just basically a K-type that I welded with my oxyacetylene torch. So 
I'm going to take this thermal couple. Oh, and here's the servo motor. So when I take this thermal couple and I touch it to this, uh, okay. Now you can see it. I hope. Okay, here we go. Touching now. You can see it's closing the damper. Okay, both of them are closed because it's 76 in the room, it's 72 that I'm telling it to crank to, so it's now throttling the stove back. It thinks the stack temperature is up at 456 degrees, 491 degrees. Okay, so let me just hold this on here. Okay, that's that's stuck there. And let me crank the set point up. Come on, man. Okay. Okay, so now it thinks that it's not hot enough in the room because I'm telling it to be 78 instead of 76 and a half so it has <clears throat> cranked the draft control to 76 percent it's trying to heat up the stove and it's got the damper shut all the way so it's trying to build up heat in the stove and this is the idle position right here so right now it thinks the stove is cranking at the max it's got the damper at 75 or the draft control at 75 percent it's got the damper shut it's got the stack temperature sitting right around 559 560 so it should be heating up the room so if I take my little DHT sensor right, right there and just hang it above the above the, the solder iron so it picks up a little of the heat rising off of it. And you'll start to see the room temperature rising. Pretty soon it's gonna start throttling back the draft control. Okay, there it goes, 80, 81. You guys still have to work on the software a little bit. Okay, there it is now. Now it's got them both shut. Okay. If I take this sensor and put it down near the floor where it's a little cooler... You'll see the temperature start to drop. And keep in mind, it still thinks the stove's cranked at 500 and something degrees on the pipe. Okay, there it is now. It's starting to th starting to think about throttling back the uh, the draft. It's still too damn hot, really, though got to adjust the limits of when these things kick in and out. I mean, you know, this is just on the bench here now and when I get this thing all hooked up to the uh to the stove, <clears throat> I'll have to watch what it does and, you know, tweak it in cuz obviously, you know, my stove doesn't go up to 530 degrees in 2 seconds. You know, so I got to make sure these thing these servo loops are stable, it doesn't hunt or anything. Try to wave this thing around, pick up a little airflow here. Okay, there it goes now. Now see it's throttling open the stove again now because I'm getting close to my set point. Okay, now it's idling again because it's right about in the right place. So this is what happens when I take the uh, thermocouple off the soldering iron. You'll see the temperature drop. 
okay and you see the draft the uh, damper motor opening the damper up because it thinks the stove's getting too cold so you know it thinks the stack temperature is only about 120 so it's cranking everything wide open now to keep it going Yeah, that's it now. It's why everything's wide open. It's hopefully throttling up the stove again. And um, you know, this would be simulating what would happen if, like, uh, it ran out of wood. You know, so um, basically, at this point, you're saying, "Hey, I think I'll probably put a little thing that the controller sends back or, to this thing that gets it beeping, gets something beeping." Um, another thing that I did is. You know, obviously these X Beetle links are a little, you know, they're not as reliable as you'd think. I mean, they do have good range and they do talk to each other pretty good, but um, you know, you can get some interference with them. Um, um, the software that I wrote for this thing is pretty robust in the sense that it uh, it's really looking for valid packets. If it doesn't get them, it throws them out. Um, there are timeouts involved like for example I can demonstrate this pretty easy if I hold the reset button on the stove end of it down it'll stop responding to packets from the controller and it'll go to its defaults which you'll see in a second here I think I got a five second timeout on this okay now it's saying hey I've lost comms with the uh, with the controller. The controller is doing something that I don't know about, which is okay because this thing here it has this ambient sensor on it. So when it loses comms, say this controller died, you know that the the remote here died. It stopped requesting packets. It stopped sending the the ambient data to it it would default, you know, it would detect the loss of carrier and the absence of packets and then it would default to measuring the room ambient temperature off of this sensor. Um, you know, I have other things in here too. If I start getting bogus data out of the thermocouple, um, it'll throttle it back to an idle condition. Um, you know, there's all sorts of safety stuff in this thing. If the stack temperature gets too high, it'll close the damper, regardless of the room temperature. Um, you know, so there's there's a lot of software in here to just make sure that the comms are still working. And if not, then it'll start going into like a limp mode. Um, if it can't get, you know, if it can't get a set point from the remote here then it will default to 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in the room. Now the reason I picked 90 is because this sensor here, I'm going to put it up near the top of the, the room, and obviously it's going to be near the stove, and if you heat with wood you know that there's a huge gradient in the room. Uh, it could be as much as like 30 degrees or almost 40 degrees where you know up at the ceiling it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit and down at the floor it's you know pretty damn cold. Um, so, you know, I'll put this up there and, you know, it's about 90 at the ceiling when the thing's sort of normally idling, you know, at the right temperature. Again, I guess on my part. So we'll have to tweak that in. I might have to adjust that temperature to 80 or 100 or whatever. But, uh, you know, a number of things can happen to this controller to cause it to not communicate with the wood stove part of it. One of them is uh, the battery could die. Um, another thing is the XB could be getting interfered with. Um, stove, you know, my house is about 40 feet long. The stove's on one end of it, so, you know, the XB should be able to communicate with it anywhere in the house. But, you know, they spec the indoor um, range of this thing at 100 feet. I did do some preliminary testing where um, I put the thing, uh, you know, over by the stove and ran it off a of battery and, uh, you know, it did uh, talk to it pretty good. I wasn't getting any packet errors or anything like that. 